What's up everybody? Guess what? It's Jay here and today I'm going to talk about predicting what's on the data science interview. That's right, prediction. There are two approaches to predict what subjects will be on your next data science and machine learning interview. Approach number one, ask the recruiter. This is usually hit or miss and depends on how well informed the recruiter is and how interested they are in helping you, aka how nice they are. Another related strategy is to actually ask around for someone who's recently interviewed at the same company. Usually it doesn't work too well if they're also competing for the same position though. So at Interview Query, we decided to tackle this problem and formulate our own methods for predicting what would be asked on the data science interview without relying on anecdotes and other people's help. And behold, this is what an example of what we actually came up with for the Facebook data scientist interview. It's called the radar chart. And now you can view exactly what topics are most commonly asked for different positions at different companies. How did we actually go about building this? Well, using data science, of course. So let's dive in. At Interview Query, our job is to make sure that the interview process is more transparent for aspiring data scientists and machine learning engineers. Our first task towards that goal was classifying data science interview questions into 10 different problem types, such as SQL and data analysis, probability and statistics, machine learning, etc. The feedback from our users was great. We were adding structure to an obscure field that was always rapidly changing. But most of our customers wanted even more insights and information about the specific roles that they were applying for. It didn't make sense for candidates to study probability concepts if the interviewers were only going to ask questions on SQL. Additionally, we realized that what's asked on the interview should often reflect the job positions type of work on a day-to-day -day basis. This adds more transparency into the different kinds of data science positions and allow anyone to really understand if the job is a right fit for them. For example, if we compare Amazon's and Google data science roles, we can see that they test vastly different subjects. Amazon places a higher emphasis on machine learning and coding, while Google cares mostly about statistical analysis. The green version of both of these is actually showing the average data science interview and what's tested in those. So how do we actually build these charts? We built them actually using two techniques. The first was crowdsourcing information from our members, and the second was applying unsupervised learning techniques on interview experience text data online. The first technique was pretty simple. Given our audience of data science candidates, we periodically would send out surveys asking everyone to recall interview experiences that they had before. Additionally, we put interview questions and submission forms on different parts of our website to encourage users to add questions they've seen before in interviews. P.S. If you want early access to our database of interview experiences and salaries, add your own interview experience in the link in the comments below as well as the description. Don't worry, it's all going to be anonymous. So crowdsourcing from our members helped out tremendously and just a simple aggregation on each question type was all that was necessary to understand the frequency of different questions. Additionally, we could segment question types by how far candidates got throughout each stage of the interview, adding a little bit more granularity into the question topics. For example, if you were interviewing at Facebook, you would know that for the technical screen, they ask you product and SQL questions, but once you get on the on-site, they start asking you a bunch of machine learning questions as well. Once we figured out that from crowdsourcing, we realized we still didn't have enough data, and so that's why we needed a second technique, which was unsupervised learning. We wanted to apply unsupervised learning on interview text data to classify the text into the different topics. Many times online and within our own Slack community, members will post their interview experiences from different companies to share. So you can see from the string of text, we humans can actually clearly understand that the member who interviewed for, at Convoy for a data scientist position was actually asked a behavioral interview question, a SQL interview question, a product intuition question, and a couple of business case questions. But it's rather difficult for a computer to process this kind of output from reading just plain text. And so given that we didn't have any training data set and labeling data was impractical in our case, the only way we could actually process these at scale would be to apply unsupervised machine learning algorithms using keyword extraction. So we decided the most practical approach would be a combination of keyword extraction with a manual rule engine. First, we had to extract as many relevant keywords as possible from the corpus to then manually map to each desired topic. Once we aggregated the topics for each interview experience, then we can understand the topic ratio for each company slash position combo. For example, if we actually had a bunch of SQL cute words in the interview text data, then you would know that SQL was being asked for that interview. This method, however, wasn't foolproof. Take the keyword and root word of code. If the user mentions code in their interview, they could be talking about coding in SQL, Python, data structures and algorithms, or even a problem about decoding a hash string. 
Therefore, we had to either throw out these keywords or apply a weighting system that would be able to give context to an ambiguous word given other question topics. We attempted a couple of different approaches for keyword extraction. We tried both LDA and K-means in order to generate topic models, clusters, and risks, tree the relevant keywords relating to each topic without having to manually assign them. But these proved difficult and less effective than simply counting keywords given the wide and disparate range of our classification. So at the end of the day, we used a new state-of-the-art unsupervised technique that is formulated into a package called SGRank. SGRank allows us to extract up to 1,900 keywords that we eventually filter down to 250 plus keywords, and then we map those keywords to our 10 plus question topics manually. That way we didn't actually have to go through all of the 1,900 and count them up. Well, we did, kind of, because we filtered them down. <laughs> Lastly, we had our keywords mapped to the larger topics. We performed a standard bag of words filtering and count and aggregated the sum of the topics for each combination of company and interview. We decided to set up a weighting system to make it a little bit more accurate as well. Each topic would be weighted differently based on three traits. First one was the recency of the interview. Uh, recent interviews should have a higher weighting towards accuracy than older interviews. We added also different weighting on the keywords itself depending on if there was a strong predictor of the actual topic. For example, if someone mentions the word leak code, it's likely they encountered the algorithms question. There's really no ambiguity on that. And then finally, we sum the actual values and we realize that data science interviews are zero sum, in which the actual values don't matter to us as much as the relative relationship of each question type frequency against each other. Therefore, I don't care if there was a hundred keywords of Python in it, if there are a thousand keywords of SQL for this data science position at, let's say, Google. Eventually, we created this list of interview experience pages that we formulated into links. So if you'd like to find them all and check them out, go to the description and click on the link that we have in the blog post below, and then you'll be able to find all the links. If you had an interview experience recently, we'd love it if you could help us contribute. Your interview questions and interview experiences, all submissions will be totally anonymous will grant you early access to our database of data science interview experiences and salaries once we are ready to release them next year. We're aiming to be a little bit more data science centric than other sites such as Glassdoor and Blind and want to be able to actually apply data analysis to all of these experiences that we're seeing like we showed you in this video. So definitely check us out, let me know what you think and I want to thank everyone for watching this video and please like and subscribe for more content from me, Jay, from Interview Query, and the Data Science Jay YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.